Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here during the middle of your busy weeks. Um, again, my name is Jesse Freitas. I am with uh, Sticker Giant. Um, I was going to go straight into a video and not say anything, but our sound setup here is not very easy for microphones and videos. So I'm going to see what happens here by just trying to hold it up. All right, so I'm just going to describe what this is Mad Men. Who's here has seen the show Mad Men? So Mad Men is is one of my favorite shows for many reasons because it ties into marketing and advertising. It also really does a great job of kind of going back in time to the 1960s when Mad Men and Madison Avenue all kind of kick-started. And kind of the point of this discussion that Don Draper's talking about is he brings up the idea of putting the word new on a product and how that was revolutionary. So go back in time with me. Think about you're coming out with your business, your product, your idea, your service, and all you say is new. And that gets people excited. What a novel concept. Nowadays, everyone says something's new or you don't even say it anymore because it's been used up. Um, the other end note of this um, presentation that he does to his clients here is he mentions nostalgia. And he talks about nostalgia in advertising and how you make a connection with people. And that's one of my themes today is it's thinking beyond what you're, you know, get out of your own world for a minute. Think about what it is your people are thinking that want to use your product or service and, and just stop and look back and look at where they're coming from, where their lives have gone, what's their age range, and think about those tie-ins. We see it culturally a lot. Stranger Things. See that advertising all over. Who, who knows why Stranger Things, beyond just the story, is so successful? Anyone? Yes. Yes. It's the 80s nostalgia. It's a callback to Steven Spielberg. It's a callback to Stephen King. It's those things that when you're a kid, E.T., watching that for the first time, when you watch that movie now, you get excited. That's why everyone's buzzing about it and you see it brought into marketing. So what is marketing? I want to ask you, any participants, just quick description. What is marketing? A word, a phrase, anyone? Build awareness. To get your brand out? Absolutely. So here's the textbook, or actually Google definition. Um, the action or business of promoting and selling products or services, including market research and advertising. I also like the little quote on the bottom, the Western arts. This is a Western art. Um, so when you think about what marketing is, I want to drive home the point. It is not just digital. I'm going to have a heavy digital content here but it's definitely not just social media. Throw that out the window. I hear social media and talks about that all the time. Marketing is so much more than social media. In fact, this is the definition of marketing from Seth Godin. He's one of my personal influences. I just got to meet him a few weeks ago and I was ecstatic and all I could do was thank him. Um, I didn't want to ask him anything, I just said thank you. He's a great blog to subscribe to. He does a daily email digest. He has amazing books, podcasts, everything. His definition is marketing is the generous act of helping someone solve a problem, their problem. Marketing helps others become who they seek to become. Always remember that. Always be thinking about what is the problem I'm trying to solve for which group of people. Another thing he said, someone asked him at this talk that he did recently, is, uh, was about Facebook and how do I build up my Facebook? And he said, stop worrying about building up your Facebook. Social media is a side effect of the good things and services and products you're doing in the world. It just comes with the business. It's not the business. So do not try to build your business solely on social media. Now, I want to look at what's happening in the world real quick before I dive into kind of more about Sticker Giant and what we do specifically. This is actually from this week, and kudos to my colleague, uh, Andrew, um, who's in the room somewhere. Um, Ad Age just was talking about McDonald's and their um, redesign of, if you will, of their branding. So what you see in this picture is, uh, notice the yellow arch in the real world scenario. Um, they've always been associated with the color red. And they're actually going away from that and using the color yellow to symbolize the arches. Now again, nostalgia calling back to a million memories we could all probably have, good or bad, with McDonald's. And they're also focusing more on lifestyle. They used to be just hamburgers. Like for years, it was just pictures of hamburgers. So they're shifting. But branding's important. That's the thing I really just want to highlight here. How people think, feel, 
and act based on what they see with your brand is an important concept. So if you are starting a business, a product or a service, and um, you're, you know, you're having a little success, stop and think about your brand. Think about hiring a designer just for a few hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars. Spend that money to get your brand on point. What else are businesses doing? They're dealing with crises every day. This is actually a supply chain issue. Who knows about this story? Um, so KFC in the UK, not here, they ran out of chicken. And they put this image in, in the, the main newspaper in the UK the next day and said, we're sorry. And none of their competitors came after them. Like there was a really little, like you'd think people would jump on this opportunity to compete against them. And their sales shot right back up when the chicken came back because of this. So we're all dealing with crises in our business every day. Supply chain for some of us is super important. If we didn't have sticky substrate, we'd be in trouble too. Um, I would hope we have something this clever. But thinking about how, how people are impacted by... Um, what you do or don't do in some cases is important. Um, also, another common thing is courageous brands are taking a stand. And this was very polarizing, um, obviously Colin Kaepernick himself, but Nike featuring him, people were burning Nike or cutting Nike socks, burning jerseys, all sorts of crazy stuff. But what happened with Nike? Their stocks, they took a dip, you know, that first 48 hours, 72 hours is pretty much a crisis if you get something on Twitter and then it kind of goes away. Their stock shot up. They're making more money than ever after this because they took a stand and people know what they value. And while that might not resonate with everyone, if, there's a, if you have a target market that values something and you're not telling them you value that too, you're probably missing out because people want to align themselves with brands that care about certain social issues. Now, that might not always be the case. You might not want to take a stand either way, but you know your business, you know your target audience, so it's something to think about. Ask yourselves, what the what was the last thing you purchased? Like, it could be a coffee in here today. And ask yourself, why? Why was I buying that, and why did I go there? Those questions, just in your daily routine, will give you a lot of insight for your own business that you're working on. So uh, again, um, my name is Jesse Freitas um, at The Sticker Life. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I don't post a ton, but uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn as well, too. Um, I have been at Sticker Giant for uh, going on five years now. Um, I am the marketing director there. I started as a team of one and one contract worker, actually, Andrew, who I mentioned. Um, we were the two people just, you know, spent about 50 hours combined a week working on the marketing of Sticker Giant. We used to be in Hygiene, Colorado. Any of you recognize the log cabin? Yes. Um, so that was in 2015. Um, this is just a quick history. Uh, we made a sticker ball, if any of you know that. Uh, we, we registered National Sticker Day because there was none, and we were like, that's a horrible thing not to celebrate in the world. So January 13th every year. Um, we set this Guinness World Record, had a huge successful PR press campaign around it. And um, while we were doing that, we were growing as a business, just incrementally, one step at a time, um, to the point that we came and moved into Longmont um, just about two and a half years ago now. So we're over by the sugar mill. We doubled our square footage. Um, our revenue has gone from around five and a half, six million when I started to we are projected over 22 million this year. So we've had extremely fast growth. We're 35% year over year, pretty much every year, just to give you an idea. And when you start something, it's exciting, it's fun. You know, when I started there, it was kind of a similar thing where I got to create something within the marketing world. And when you see this kind of growth, things get harder, but it's a lot of fun. And I'm going to go through a lot of how we've gotten here. So 2012, this predates my time at Sticker Giant. Um, John Fisher, our owner, um, he started the company in year 2000. We've pivoted a few times, but he was, he was a photo journalist or, or photo major. So he always says, I, don't, I had no idea how to run a business, but he was really good at marketing, like just kind of it was in his nature. Um, so he built an online business and he did really good with organic search when that wasn't really a term or something people were saying. He knew how to get all the keywords on the site, bring people in. And Sticker Giant was like the number one sticker, giant, or sticker website online for years and years and years. And then 2012 hit and a thing called Panda um, from Google dropped, which is an algorithm change. 
and they started penalizing businesses for what was called keyword stuffing. So Sticker Giant at that time went from rank one on like every sticker term you could imagine to like page 14. And it was a it was a nightmare and a panic and a scramble. So him as a small business owner, he was like, I need real marketing. I can't rely on these couple things I'm doing to grow my business. So, uh, you know, fast forward three years, that's when I came in the picture. I was fortunate to pick up from an owner that cares about marketing. If you are a business owner, really try to care about this. If you go hire someone in the future to run your marketing let them be creative. Don't, you know, don't give up on that side of the business because it's really important. Now I want to walk through, uh, or real quick, um, we have 12 laws of business. If you're um, hanging out at Longmont Startup Week all day at one o'clock, John Fisher and Beth Smith are chief operating officer doing a talk. They're going to go into more depth on this, but strengths, strengths lead to weaknesses. So that strength turned to a weakness and John had to adapt. And it's a great, it's a simple, simple thing but think about what makes your business product or service um, unique or strong and look for the weaknesses that could come out of that. And that's how you'll avoid that and keep growing as a business. So here's the like kind of the, this is the photo op moment if you want a photo. Here's the five steps um, that we use. This is our proven process in doing everything we do in acquiring customers. And it is called acquire your next 500 clients because we have um, started acquiring 500 new customers in a week at Sticker Giant. So that's the, this is real stuff here. Now, it doesn't translate to every business. Your business is going to be different. Five customers could mean a lot more than 500, depending on what you're selling. So keep that in mind. But it's pretty simple. Um, and again, these five steps work in our business. You need to translate that to your business. So drive website traffic. If you're at La Vida Bella Cafe, you need to drive foot traffic. So keep that in mind as I'm going through this. But we're driving website traffic. We're doing that through paid search, organic search, direct links online, which can come from press. They can come with uh, good collaboration with strategic partners, social media, email marketing, events, and referrals. And I'm going to go in depth on each step a little more as we go through, just so you know. Then you're going to guide them through the sales funnel. Again, for us, this is our website. For you, it could be a storefront. It could be a sales pitch you do with a potential client. It could be many different things. Um, and a lot of this is around, well, I'll get into that more in a minute. The end result of that, step three, is lead generation. So if you're not generating interest in what you're doing, then you might want to stop at step one and step two a little longer and look at what you're doing. Um, step four is retargeting. Um, people will often ask me, you know, why... Why retarget customers that just bought from you, say, 30 days later? Well, why does, I'll bring it back to the McDonald's reference, why does McDonald's spend so much money on advertising? Why does Coca-Cola put up Super Bowl ads? If you're not in front of people, they're going to forget about you, or they might think you're not doing well, and then they'll start wondering, whatever happened to Coca-Cola? You know, and then you'll be like, I don't know, like, maybe it's the health drinks, although they own most of those anyways. So, um it just, you know, think about that. Like you sell someone, but you don't want to leave them forever. Um, and then engagement. We do a lot of fun stuff. And I'm going to talk through some of that too. Because if you're not engaging with your customers or giving them something tangible, especially if you're an online business to walk away with, creating that experience, um, then you're also not going to uh, keep them. And one um, thing I like to say about this, it's kind of, it's kind of like we use a lot of dating metaphors. Um, and it's a good, it's actually, I think a Seth Godin thing. Um, but when you think of a business problem, if you try to relate it back to a dating metaphor, it can, it can be really weird and unique. But at one point in time we had on our sponsored stickers, we said, um, sponsored by sticker giant so that, you know, you knew our stickers were from us. And then, um, John Fisher actually said this, he referred to it. Well, it's like going on a date with a girl and then st uh, stapling your business card to their forehead. Like, so everyone knows they're with you, not just because they're with you. So um, it's a fun thing I like to tie back to any tough decisions we have, and it works. And, and you'll have fun and laughs in the office. Um, all right, drive website traffic. So what we do is we sell promotional stickers and product labels. These are custom products. So we have kind of a unique um, opportunity, uh, if you will, because if you can imagine the sticker and label keyword, keyword world that is out there, it's very, very large. Uh, labels are not just sticky substrates that you put on products. There's also 
tags and other weird things that you just label something with. Um, stickers, we are not selling you know, your Broncos stickers or Cowboys stickers on our website. We're printing custom stickers for primarily businesses. So um, when it comes to going out on the internet and figuring out how you're going to bring in people, you really have to spend a lot of time on this. Um, and there's some tools I'm going to show you in a minute to do this. But the end goal is going out, finding people who need the products or services you offer and redirecting them to your site. And if you're doing things out in the world and not telling them where to go, call to actions on videos or posts or, you know, at an event, um, you're, you're not going to get them to your intended purpose. You're not going to get sales. So always be thinking of how, ways to drive people back to where you want them to be to sell your products. So um, at each step, I'm going to go through tool time because this is why you're here today, right? Is find out things you can do to implement in your business. So the number one thing you should do if you have a website and you're trying to gain business, if you who who is in Google Analytics for your website and business? Good, quite a few of you. How many look at that weekly? That was pretty good, but not everyone. So measure, measure what you're doing. And Google Analytics is going to give you so much data on your target market. Like you don't have to do focus groups or go out and do all these surveys in the world anymore. If you have a website and you're driving people there, this is going to tell you something and it's free. You can find out about you know age, demographics, times people are on your site. You could set up goal conversions for if it is a checkout experience or a quote request experience. You can set up all those goals and track it back. And it's free. Google does an analytics academy too. That's also free because Google loves to teach you how to use their product because they do want money later down the line for some of their stuff. Um, so by the way, I put little credit card icons for things you have to pay for. The other ones are free. Um, Google AdWords, of course, you're going to be paying, but when you type in whatever you're looking for, keywords, phrases are super important. Um, there's also something in AdWords called um, dynamic search. You can actually have AdWords just comb your website for all the words that are on it, and it's going to spit back out to you um, a campaign you can run. Um, so you actually have Google read your website and then run a campaign based on what Google thinks and then measure it and see how it does. Those have been super effective for us with all the, the pages and content we have on there. Um, uh, Google AdWords. Oh, dynamic search. Um, and there's a lot of things. Google's really good too as a growing business. You know, For a long time, it was just a, a part-time employee and John, one of the first times was like, I want you $100 a week just to see what you can get back. So that's how we started this. You know, you just start small, whatever you can afford, and start bidding on some of your top keywords that you see from Google Analytics and measure it and see what you get back and then just keep building it. And Google actually approached us a couple of years ago and they wanted to really scale us and help us. And that was for free, but it, man, it had an impact on our business. So they will really help you. I, can, I give Google a lot of praise. Um, for the, how they help businesses. Um, the other two are Bing ads and Yahoo Gemini. Yahoo Gemini is the smallest sliver of the pie. I don't recommend you go out and do all these things at once. Start with Google. It's the biggest chunk of the market. Go to Bing after that. They're the second biggest. When you also think about voice assistants, Alexas, everyone's constantly talking about this stuff. All that's tied to search right now. Like As long as you have a well-built website that's coded for this thing, um, you will show up with the Alexas and those things. There's other things you can do because it is one result on if you ask Alexa a question, especially restaurants. But just build a good website and bring value to people with that website and play with these tools and you'll get results out of it. Um, Google Search Console is the other thing. Um, this is how the internet reads your website. So you take your site map and you actually load it into Search Console. And this is telling Google, the search bots, all these little spiders they call that go crawl the internet and send back what your business is to the world. Um, this is important. If you haven't done this and you're not getting results or showing up organically, that's, this is how to do that. Um, also, there's a, there's a paid tool, but it's not that expensive. It's called SEM Rush. This is where you can um, plug in all of this Google data and keywords, and you can see how you're searching compared to your competitors. They do really good competitor analysis here. So as you're building this up, I recommend that tool. Um, Yext, um, who, who has a storefront business in here? Just one, two, maybe? Um, 
Yext is, it's for your online listings. So if you think of Google My Business and you know your Facebook profiles, those are the common ones everyone refers to. Well, um, our SEO person, when we hired her, she was like, well, Yext is this tool that combines like everything online to a single listing about your business. So your phone number is the same, your address is the same. So if you have any changes, you change it in this one place and it goes out everywhere, which is super effective um, for being found. And it's not that expensive. It's very, it's really affordable. Um, Moz is another one. It's kind of the same thing. Um, just check both those out and kind of compare and contrast which one will work for your business. And then the final thing for driving website traffic is social media. Now, I mentioned this is a side effect of your business. A lot of people will approach me and say, your social media is so great. And it is. Thank you, Sam. He's right here. Um, our guy who's running our social right now. But um, I, I want to highlight, like, it's fun, it's cool, it's a great way to get brand awareness and show people what you're doing. It's only 10% of our leads a week. So don't, that's, I want to reinforce that social media is amazing, it's important to put yourself out there on it, but it's not going to grow or drive your business to the point that some people hype it up to. Now, we are on every channel. Um, we try to be as in many places as we can, as long as it's measuring success back to us. Snapchat's the best example. People are still unsure of whether they should do it. Do it. We got 3,000 followers in like a year and a half. And the way we did that, and you'll have to think of creative ways in your business, is we put a Snapchat code sticker in every order for a year and a half and said, share with us. And guess what? Your customers who are using Snapchat and love it will start sharing and following you. So, um, it's, I'll bring back this point later, but think of ways to integrate social media in your customer journey. If you don't, you're just doing something out there when your business is here and you're not going to attract that much attention back to the business. So think about that. Um, guiding through the sales funnel. Now, I've mentioned we have a complex uh, custom ordering product. So we have, you know, choose from all these types, stickers or labels. What's the difference? Does anyone care? Not really, but you do because you want to choose the right product. Stickers are outdoor durable, by the way. Labels are indoor, so they're more used for products. So it's a difference of weight. I'm going to get a little geeky with you for a moment just since I mentioned it. Um, so that's the first step. Then we have shape, size, quantity. So we have all these things, and then we get to artwork as well, too, which is the number one challenge in our business is people send us artwork. It's either good or bad, and we have to work with them to get that printed because we don't want to print you a horrible-looking sticker, even though you swear that's the right art file, you know? So these are like whatever your business is, think of your biggest challenges, ours being artwork, yours being maybe just getting in front of people. Maybe it's that sales pitch you have to do in person. So there might be ways to go around refining and thinking about how you're selling yourself there. But um, things we do along this journey is um, conversion tuning, continuous development, personalized messaging is something I want to touch on, and then differentiation. Differentiation is the most simple thing you can think of. If you're in business and you don't know what makes you different as a business, you have a problem already. Ours is we're fast. We have one to two day turnaround. We have an easy to order online platform that allows people to find us, upload your artwork, get it really quick. That's, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, so make sure you highlight that though, because when they get to your page and you did that advertising and said this thing, if they're not reinforced with that, what it is you're different about or how that's going to benefit them in ordering stickers. There's tons of places you can order stickers and we might not provide value for everyone, but some people are going to need that sticker in 48 hours or 72 hours for an event. So we're providing value there. Now for, this is what I like to say about your website. This is why your website is like a house plant. Come follow me here. So who's bought a house plant before? Lots of you can relate then. Who, who, who's had one die on you? Oh, look at that. Almost all of you. So you see where I'm going. Um, if you don't, if you don't take care of your website, if you just pay someone to build you this shiny new tool with lots of features and you're like, sweet, I'm set on to the next thing. You're going to, you're going to have a problem. That strength at that moment is going to become a weakness. Um, if you are not constantly looking at your website, ways to improve it, listening to your customers and going back to that, in figuring out what you can do better, what new features are available, what's new in the world, going to conferences, all these things that could go into it, or, or just hiring a development person or firm to kind of keep, keep you on your toes and keep you up to date, you're, not, you're gonna fail. So water, water your website, not literally. 
Yeah. <laughs> Don't start watering your laptops in here. <laughs> Not responsible. Um, A-B testing is the other big thing. Now, really quick, I have A-B testing on this presentation as a reference point to websites. Again, this could be anything. Uh, this could be your emails. There's tools that will let you send out two emails to the same audience and just target different people. So you could see which subject line works better. Um, there's uh, all the social media ads you build, the search ads, um, all of that. A-B tests. Don't just say, like if we just said we're fast all the time, we're going to lose out on a lot of people who want quality or they want service or these other features that are more important to them. So A-B test your copy, your images, your videos, whatever it is you're using. And then this example on our website is, um, so this is our cart page. And you can barely see, it's even worse with the light on this right now, but there's a pencil and there's a duplicate and a trash icon. Well, that might not mean something to everyone. So we're this is running on our site right now, by the way. So we moved it over here and made it a little bolder to see, okay, you can edit, duplicate, and delete. And we're running a test to see, does this help people get through that cart process, check out and get into our ordering process or production process faster? So we're constantly running about three to four of these. Um, a month right now, but all you need to do is one, like, and it will make an impact. We've had uh, tests that have improved conversion rates by 35%. That's pretty significant. Um, so test, 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 test. Um, here's some tools for, for kind of all the stuff I'm running through real quick here. Um, task management tools, um, if you do have a developer, Jira is a really good developer platform if you haven't heard of it. It isn't free. Um, but it's a good one if you have a team of developers or people working on your site. Uh, Asana is a free start one, as long as you don't have too many people. It's a great task management tool. I mean, even if you have problems with your own time management and you're a one-person one marketing wrecking machine and you're just doing it all, you can throw your tasks in a list and keep organized. I highly recommend it. Um, it's also great for cross-department within an organization as you're growing, too. Um, Scrum is just a methodology we practice. This is two-week sprints. So every two weeks, we're bringing in website tickets of things we want to improve or bug fixes or things customers have told us, and then we're releasing new things. So that when I say continuous development, in our world, it means every two weeks we're pushing new things, new features on our website. Um, write message. I haven't touched on this yet, but personalized messaging. Um, write message is a, is a tool. It is a paid for one. I forgot to click the credit cards on. Um, it will let you change the copy of your page based on where someone came to your page from. It's pretty cool. There's fairly small company right now, but imagine you send out an email to like a specific list of let's say VIP customers you have or clients you have, and you want it to say dear valued customer or something like that. Um, you can change the copy on the page. So when they see your email and click to it, it says something. You can even have it changed to their name. So I, I know you probably haven't seen it too much in your own usage of websites out there, but it's growing. And, and if you think about it, it makes sense because you're personalizing an experience um, that calls brings value to people. They like that. Some people, it creeps you out, but you know, figure out what your market likes. Um, Google Optimize. This is the free uh, A-B testing tool. It's, pr it's fairly easy to use, um, but you can run up to three tests a month for no charge. So why not? Go change a button, change the copy. It, will, it might change your life and your business. Um, Hotjar is also another, it's free to start, but then as you add on features, you pay for things. But Hotjar will actually record users on your website. So it, it does heat mapping and you can do recording. So again, I know marketing is a little creepy in 2019, but <laughs> we can see people click around our site and what you're doing. Uh, so it's 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 super helpful because again you don't have to set up a, a, a focus group and have 20 people come in and use your website and some guy walk around with a clipboard. No, you can just plug in a tool, watch a few, get some validation on a test idea or some change on your website or what's working with my new homepage or not. Um, so those are just a few tools that I'd recommend to help get people through the sales funnel. Again, if you're not a website business, think of think about all the little things, your store frontage, your signs, your directions, your emails, you're sending people. Think about all those little things along your customer journey and try to just tweak and improve and don't just let things sit static forever. Uh, change them. So lead generation. 
Um, for us, this is the end result of, of all this marketing efforts. And it actually, in our environment, gets passed off to our customer service be, because we're just getting artwork, we're getting leads, and then we actually have to get an artwork approval out to people for them to say, yes, that's exactly what I want. And then it goes to a production. So it's a little unique in our case. For some of you, this might be, yes, I got the sale. I sold some shoes, t-shirts, stickers, whatever. Um, and you're happy. Um, I want to point out, though, here's the tool for this one. If you don't have people that are competent and know your business and can smile and give great service, everything you do is going to fail. And it's just the reality. And I want to point it out because customer service is critical to business. We can't be good at marketing if you don't have good service. So whoever it is doing that for your business, you know, again, there's a talk later today at one where they'll talk about some of this, but just, you know, look for online tools. Service is important. And I want to give huge kudos to our team because does anyone know MPS scores? Net Promoter Score, Daniel does. Net Promoter Score is a survey um a system, if you will, that gets just quick feedback from your customers and tells you how you're doing as it from a service standpoint. We are over 90 on average every week. That is incredible. Most businesses are more in the 60 to 70 range. So without great service, you're not, you're not going to succeed in business over the long time. All right. Uh, retargeting. Um, so I talked about our, our funnel and it being a little tricky. Retargeting, the important part, I call it step four. It's on this part of the presentation, not because it always falls in this order. Things do not fall perfectly in a one to five step plan. It's just the same as customer journeys. People can come in the front door and then they do something weird and then they come back. You know, People are people. So what happens on our site, though, is people look over those sticker types. They get confused, overwhelmed. They don't want to make a decision. Maybe they were just looking to see what's available, and they drop off your website. Well, what we do is we come back with videos on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, and we curate video content to answer frequently asked questions. So again, that education part so what sticker or label should I choose? That's one of our videos we promote. So if someone goes to this page, drops off of it, we use that URL and people who didn't convert to set up a campaign on Facebook, set up a campaign through Google AdWords. Google AdWords does run YouTube ads, if you're not aware, just to point that out. Um, and then those videos will drop on people um, and they'll see, oh, oh, okay, I get it. It explains them something about stickers and labels. And we see incredible conversion rates on those. Like it's the best money you can spend on online advertising is just getting back in front of the people that for whatever reason dropped off and didn't convert. So I highly, highly recommend doing that. Another note, if you set up YouTube ads, you can get really annoying really quick if you're not paying attention to your features. When I first started running these a few years ago, we used to get phone calls like, Hey, I've seen your YouTube video like 10 times this week. Like, come on, really? And like that happens. So be careful about your settings. We had to kind of tweak our frequency. And I think we only hit that video like once in 30 day window. So we try to, you know, you have to be respectful. Digital marketing can really annoy people. And there's a lot of terrible marketers in the world. It's just a fact. So be careful on when you set these things up not to annoy people because you can quickly turn a positive into a negative by just not paying attention. So watch, check frequency, look at what's right for your business. Um, another thing, this is just another example. I mentioned artwork. So if they drop off the artwork page, we're going to show them an artwork video. Um, the other thing, uh, when they finish an order, I mentioned the follow-up, you know, within 30 days, you might start seeing our ads again. Well, we also send out email campaigns. So uh, email marketing is alive and well. If you're not utilizing it, you're, you're missing out. Now we do, our, our, our little tip that works well for people with us is we keep it very like simple and personalized, like the emails you'd get from friends. We don't convolute it with a huge newsletter format. I think social media really kind of killed newsletter emails to a degree. Now this will work for depending on your business. Um, so just think about where people are engaging with you. If it is primarily email, then a newsletter is still effective. But if you have people on Facebook and Twitter and all these other places, your video content or your little stories are going to be well, well more worthwhile on these other channels than stuck in this long email that no one's going to spend time to read. So just watching your, your open rates and your click-through rates on your emails 
to figure out kind of where you should be and just kind of tailor and mess with the, the, the content you're using. Again, A-B test it. Um, and we offer coupons. Coupons, if you do it, uh, John's always said, once you go the coupon strategy route, you're stuck for life. <laughs> people come to expect that. But we have a lot of ex uh, success with couponing and just encouraging people to come back and running different deals throughout the year. All of that runs through emails. We did once upon a time survey our, our customers like, hey, what do you like getting from us? And guess what? They want deals. Not a shock. So engagement. Um, I'm just going to bring up fun things we do. Now, again, I every time I come to a talk like this or a conference, I just look like things might not resonate or relate right back to my business, but I just try to think, what could I do that's like similar to that, but you know, would fit in my business? So the first thing we do is every order that goes out the door, we throw in extra stickers. There's extra stickers come off of the production process, mostly just because you need a, a buffer for quality reasons. If, if you get sucked up in a machine or, you know, lots of weird things happen in production, I can't even explain to you. Um, so we add in extra stickers as a result of that to every order, not to waste it and to give something back. So you're a marketer, you're going to an event, you ordered 300 stickers. Well, you know, you did the per sticker cost and you had a budget and then suddenly you get 350 in a box. How excited are you? So that's just like a little thing we do that we get a lot of feed, positive feedback constantly on. And we've been doing it since we started printing stickers. The other thing is uh, that is Samantha, our shipping cam. That's our graphic for it. We take a photo of the products before they leave the shop. So right before they go in the box, there's a quick scan of a ticket, a photo is taken. When the email is sent for the shipping notification, um, people see that picture in the email. So it's like, hey, we'll be there in a few days and here's a picture of it. And imagine you're you know, an artist and you just drew this design and you're so stoked about getting it as stickers and then you see this email and you're like, oh, there it is, my art in real life. And people share it out on social and it's just a great touch point with our customers. Um, another one is um, people who, who tag us and refer us online or through we have a how'd you hear about us, you know, capture feel on our checkout process. If you're not asking customers how, how'd you hear about us, how are we doing those things, you're not going to learn a lot about your marketing. That's also super important. But when people do say, hey, use Sticker Giant, um, we track, we try to track them down, see if they're in our, our system. And then we email, or not email, we send them a physical gift. So whether it's like a koozie or a pint glass with our brand on it in a handwritten card, the handwritten is critical. We are an online business. You don't see us unless it's something like this where you're seeing me now or if we're at an event. We're doing you know, 500 customers a week. You're not really interacting with us. So those few touch points where we can do a handwritten note goes a long way. People do not expect handwritten notes in this day and age. So think about those little touches you can put in that make people feel that nostalgia again. Um, so uh, engagement, social media. Who follows our social media currently? A few of you. It's at Sticker Giant. I'm going to shamelessly plug us right now. Um, but our social media is not about us. Like, you know, there's one to 5% of the time we'll have meet employee features and other things about our business, but it's about our customers. And um, Sam can tell you this. Um, when I told him, when I hired him and was talking to him about it, uh, it's the Star Wars thing. We are not Luke Skywalkers. You are not the hero of your story. You are solving a problem for someone else. So you should talk about that problem you solve for someone else and what they're doing with it. So we make our content about our customers and the stories that they're telling with the products that we make for them. So we say every sticker has a story. What's yours? That's our closing to our videos. We're very, very passionate about just telling stories. We don't want to be too selly. Ads are for selling. The retargeting is a little bit of selling. But when it comes to content generation, Think about your customers. Think about the problems you're trying to solve. Be educational. And yeah, every now and then say something about yourself so they know you're real people, especially if you're a website. Um, we have a blog as well, too. That was like the early days John Fisher was writing this blog. And that's, again, all about our customer stories. Andrew's doing a great job now interviewing customers, finding out what they're doing. And still, blogs are still amazing, amazing search results can be found with blogs. So don't don't ignore blogging just because podcasting has become popular, which leads me to the next thing. We have a podcast. It's called Stickers on the Mic. So we talk, Andrew and I talked about this for, man, two years, I think. Like, man, we should do a podcast. And it's like, well, what are we going to talk about? Stickers and labels? Like, that, <laughs> it's not really that exciting. So we settled on business growth and marketing. 
Like we're working with businesses. So let's just talk with our customers about what they're doing. So we started this two years ago. We have 20 some episodes now, I think over 20. Um, and we've just invited our customers on in, into our shop in our marketing studio. We built a podcast set and we just talked to them about their business. Um, so if you want to hear some fun little small business stories, that's all it is. Um, so it's pretty simple format. And we've been starting to do those remote where we're talking to businesses around the country, not just here in Colorado. So we're just trying to produce interesting content that tells a story. Other stuff, we started doing events and trade shows this year since we are a digital brand and mostly online. We've, we've started getting into that kind of outbound game because we have no sales team at Sticker Giant. There is no one with a portfolio going around to the breweries and restaurants in town, flipping out a book and telling you what you, we can do. We meet people at the keyboard and where they're typing in and searching for stickers. So we realize that we need to do a little more outbound. So we're doing events now. And when you have the world's record largest sticker ball, I can tell you it makes it easier. Um, you, you know, we've all, well, some of us have probably been at events where you're trying to like pedal you know, hey, hey, like, you know, come talk to me. Come talk to me for a second about this thing I could sell you. And it's hard. Um, dropping a Guinness World Record down makes it a lot easier. Um, I will say that. But think about events, um, community events, charity things that we do. We do a ton with the Longmont Chamber, um, Longmont Startup Week. We print stickers. We actually do in-kind uh, stickers for events around the world. And our focus there has been like word camps and startup weeks. We've been sponsoring startup weeks literally around the world for, uh, I want to say, a decade uh, about now. So all we do is say, hey, if you need stickers, we'll send them to you. Just throw our logo and a link up to our website and give us a shout out. And so we're printing stickers for all these people all over the world starting up businesses, which has brought back a lot to us. And really the intent there is not to get in front of all the eyeballs of people that attend it, but it's who are the volunteers, who are the people putting on the events, who are the movers and shakers really making an impact in the community? Because they're going to be your influencers and your referral points um, in you know a whole city potentially. So think about ways, different ways to get in front of people. Um, we made a lot of gifts. And I know this sounds like kind of a unique or like crazy idea maybe to some of you. Um, so gifts have become a real popular form of communication as well as emojis. And one thing that's happening very quietly in the world right now, like everyone's using gifts of like, you know, Jon Snow and Game of Thrones and like, you know, you name it, movie, TV show. That stuff is going to get shut down soon. And businesses are go do not use copyright gifts if you're a business, because I swear to you, it's coming. It's going to swing full circle where they're going to lock that stuff down. Just like you know, everything's a little slow on the online world because the legal game takes forever. But we decided to get in front of this and make our own gifts and use our employees in them and think of just all these fun, unique things we could say that we could just reply back to people on Twitter or add into our emails of reactions that we can uh, you know, visually express in a GIF versus just typing it. Um, we launched this just about a year ago, not quite a year ago. We made 170 of them. It only took one day getting them, you know, we organized employees, told them, here's a list, spent one day with our videographer, did not cost that much money in reality. And we just got weird and got costumes out and had like so much fun. And you know what happened from then till now? We are over 80 million views on our GIF library. Every single one of those GIFs, if you click it, goes to our website. So obviously not everyone typing in GIFs of like beautiful is gonna be wanting a custom sticker, but it's kind of just like you know an oddball, fun, just throw our brand out there and see what happens and give something anyone can use. I've had friends literally um, text me with a like screenshot of a GIF and go, is that you? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, how did, like only you would end up in a GIF on my like random Facebook app. And I'm like, yeah, that is a little weird, isn't it? Um, but we had our, our Megan who does our SEO, she actually worked on keywording all these. So we, we went to giphy.com is the website, giphy.com backslash sticker giant if you want to see them all. Um, and we actually just submitted to them, hey, we're a brand, we want an official branded GIF library, and they approved us like within a week. Then we got on Tenor, T-E-N-O-R is the other one, which is connected with LinkedIn, and I forget if that's the Facebook one, but basically we got them into all the right spots, got all the right keywords behind them, so when people are using those random GIF things, 
um, for random statements. They're where they're just pulling up naturally. So, and it's a great way to use in your CS and other areas of the business. So, uh, we just made 170 more that haven't launched yet because we like it, and so we'll have we'll have 340 soon. And it's a great way to get employees uh, out there too. Um, we, you know, when I started at Sticker Giant, I was employee number 25. We are soon going to be at 67 employees. So as a growing business where you kind of get out of that family environment a little bit where employees are a little more visible, it's important to bring your people behind your business back to the forefront because it makes you feel real, um, especially, again, as an e-commerce business. So we've gone through a lot here. Um, what's in the details? So I've said it a few times, but if you don't measure it, you're not going to know what works. Those gifts have generated a handful of orders for a few thousand dollars. Oops, sorry. Our COO was blown away when I told her that after a month. She was like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah. So measure it. Don't just put something out there and be like, yeah, it was great. We're doing really well. Uh, find out what it's exactly doing for you. Brand consistency. I mentioned getting a designer if you're just starting a business. Make sure you get that logo locked in. What are your colors? What are your fonts? It doesn't take a lot of time, and it's going to resonate for maybe the lifetime of your brand. Um, and be consistent um, across all channels with what you're saying and what you're doing. Um, one channel will not be a successful long-term strategy. If Facebook ads are killing it for you and you're getting a great return on investment, that's cool. Keep doing that, but don't ignore trying other things. Don't ignore the search. Don't ignore the other things. Um, this will keep you kind of bulletproof. Facebook, could something could happen legally and they could just disappear. And then, yeah, there'll be something new, but... You know, try out Twitter, try out LinkedIn, see what works for you. Um, leads aren't free. Um, organic social is very tough these days. Um, quick note on that, the community uh, groups and uh, like Reddit's kind of starting to work itself more into the business world. Um, so communities and groups, if you can find, if like let's say you're a bicycle shop and there's bicycle fanatic groups, if you can join a Facebook group or start one around biking and enthusiasm and talk to those people in a Facebook group, that's your organic reach right now. The groups are super engaging. You, you don't have all the algorithms and filters. So if that's something, like it's a little odd for our business, but I think it's a great strategy for a lot of small business owners. If you have something that um, resonates or a hobby like that, go start a Facebook group and start getting people tuned in and just have fun. Don't, don't be silly. Um, and perfection is an endless pursuit. What I mean by that is just just put content out there. It doesn't need to be the perfect photo. You can shoot a, a video from your iPhone without a mic. It's okay. Just start getting content out in the world and just be real. Like I swear, people sometimes like that raw, unpolished content. And some people have that in their brand guidelines. Like we're actually going to shoot all our video footage raw. We don't want it to look too polished because we're not a polished brand. So just think about that. Just put stuff out there and be real and authentic with who you are and what you're trying, what problems you're trying to solve for people. Um, so what about the money? Uh, yes, we're a larger business now. We haven't always been. I mentioned the $100 for starting pay-per-click. Um, this is a super important thing. How we've always done our marketing budget is a percentage of our projected revenue is given to us to go out and get customers. So if you if everything I said today so far was just like oh man like I don't get it this is too much just take it like just think about one thing you can walk away with and maybe it's this um, and we started this this right here thirteen percent includes our headcount I do think it's important especially if you're a business owner you include your marketing headcount if you have employees or will in the future just keep that in mind because that goes into it um, but we started when I started there was ten percent without headcount included. Um, and we've, I've asked for more, of course, over time, cause that's what I do. Um, but use that if you're projecting your revenue out, pull a percentage of that and dedicate it to marketing. Cause if you don't, you're going to have a hard time in this world to getting through to your customers. Okay. Just about to wrap up a couple things, state of marketing. i showed some cool visuals. These are all things that people kind of talk about that are really important be empathetic with your customer. Again, it's a problem you're solving. Be empathetic to them. Don't solve the problems within your business that may cause fr frustration. Solve your customer's problems and you'll be successful. What is your customer's intent? Especially when they go to a keyboard or talk to Siri or whatever they're doing, what is the intent they hope to get 
from what they're searching for. Don't just be out there to be out there. Be out there for the right people. Purpose, passion, it's, it's becoming more of a thing. Be mindful of, of where you stand and what your values are and that sometimes it's important to share those with the world because you're gonna, you might find your right audience that way. Um, and then the customer journey. Integrate. All these things are all over the place, but make sure they tie back in with your customer journey so that it's meaningful for your business, not just meaningful to get a post out. And then emotion. People are emotional. The nostalgia factor. Think of, think of what is going to resonate with people and really focus on what's behind, what's motivating them to come see you, eat your food, drink your beer, etc. All right. And we're just about at time. Um, I don't know if I need to wrap up and get off stage or if we have time for questions. We're good? Okay. I'll take some questions now then if you want to hang out. If I can see. Anyone have questions? Yes. Um, we are working on that. We're about to launch our first cup. Oh, yeah. She asked if we print on uh, sustainable materials. We're about to launch in the next few months here um, a recycled, two recycled paper lines. Um, obviously, vinyl's a, a plastic, essentially, so we're bringing some paper lines in to be more sustainable. We're also working towards our, it's called an SGP certification it's sustainable green printing so it's um they actually do some really cool stuff they can take all this sticky material that's thrown in the waste and actually grind it up and turn it into fuel pellets so we're looking at programs like that too any other questions wow okay yeah karen Uh, small local business, best thing for marketing. I would say make online listings. Like just make sure you're dialed in, like go play with Yex, make sure your Google My Business is set up and make sure all your information is accurate. Because if you just make sure the internet sees who you are and what you do, you're going to show up all over the place. Oh, and if you do any advertising, geographically target. I, think, I feel like that's a given, but. Yeah. What marketing, marketing automation, you mean like for a specific channel? Okay, yeah. Oh, I did forget uh, ConvertKit's our email tool. I, I did forget that on here. So ConvertKit's a good one. Um, it, it does some of that A-B testing. You just set it up and let it go, and it does some like email trees and stuff. Of course, MailChimp and those work really well too. Um, other other automations, we use Hootsuite for social, but not too much. A lot of the platforms, you're better off posting organically through their platform because Hootsuite can, I think LinkedIn's the one, right, where it really like just will mess with your video or image if you post it through Hootsuite. So you got to be a little careful using some of those tools. Yeah. Uh, North America English language uh, right now. We're, we don't really advertise in Mexico to date, um, but it's our next big, big plan. So Canada is a huge growing market of ours and then all over the U.S. But our top markets are New York City, Chicago, L.A., like kind of where the population hotspots are. Uh, we can, uh, yes, yep. It, we print any design you send us, so as long as it's pre-written, we got you. All right. Uh, if that's it, thank you for coming. I appreciate your time and have a good long month startup week. <laughs>